Hey guys, it's good to have everybody with us today and hopefully you guys are doing well and hopefully you and your family are doing well. And this morning, I just want to invite you guys to, uh, to just get in here with us and to worship with us and to try to learn something from this morning, okay? We're still talking about our Easter science lesson and we're still talking about uh, the, the Easter message. And so I want everybody to just try to open your ears and open your mind. If this is the first time that you're watching this, my name is Brother Joey Cox, and I'm the student minister here at Plainview Church of God. So I would just like to welcome you this morning if this is your first time. And for the rest of you guys, if it's not your first time, I want you guys to get in here with us and just worship God. So if there's anybody out there this morning... Uh, that has a prayer request or a special need that you would just like to lift up to God right now, I want you to raise your hand and just say, God, take it, and we're going to pray. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you so much for these students. We thank you for everyone that's watching, God. We pray, Father, this morning that you would just do something miraculous through this service, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what you want us to, God, this morning. I pray that you'd let us have a good time and let us have a fun time doing it. God, we love you and we thank you. And it's your wonderful name we pray. Amen. All right, so I want everybody to get up. Everybody stand up. We're going to do our song this morning. So a lot of you know it. It's Good, Good Father. It's a little bit of a twist on it. So I want everybody to get up, and we're going to do the motion. Just follow along with the video, and we're going to do it. All right, here we go.
Father. Hope you guys are following along with that. It's an awesome uh, song that we need to get in our mind. So one thing that we've been studying about the last few weeks is science, okay? So today, uh, we're, we have uh, got some verses and things go along with our Easter science. And I hope that you guys watched last week so you know the motions for this week. But if you don't, it's the same verse, okay? I want you guys to watch me. It says, when anyone, if this is your first time, we're going to do the motions, okay? Here we go. When anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, okay? I want everybody to do this with me. Come on. Here we go. One more time. When anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. All right? So I want you guys to be thinking about that verse, learn the verse, and you can send it in to us when you learn it. I want you guys to try to do the motions and learn that and send it to Sister Candy, send it to myself, and uh, we'll be, we want to be looking for those things, okay? So you guys send those to us. Um, one thing that we're going to be doing this morning is our object lesson, all right? Like I said, we've been studying on Easter science. And our object lesson this morning is really neat. It's not a magic trick, but it kind of looks like a magic trick, but it's actually science, okay? I want you guys to watch the video. Trouble for your parents have got on to you about 
you know what? God still loves you, and God still cares about you, and He wants the best for you. And following Jesus is His path, and Jesus is a direction in your life will always be the best direction, okay? All right, so now for a couple of fun things. We usually have game time in here. And I want to remind you of one of our games that we've already talked about, but just to remind you, we talked about the egg roll, not the one from the Chinese restaurant, but the egg roll. So you have an egg, and if you have a friend or a brother or sister, you can get a plastic egg, or you can get a hard-boiled egg not a raw egg because you might end up with yolk all over your face, but get one of those eggs and you can race across the living room, you can race across the table, just make sure that you both have the same starting and the ending line and you can race with it all day long, okay? So remember about the egg roll. Another game, now that it's Easter time, some of these you guys may have some stuff in your home, uh, some plastic eggs. We, this is kind of a twist on the shell game. So if you have three plastic eggs and you want to play uh, the shell game with them, you can put a dime, a nickel, you know, a ball, whatever you want to, in those egg, in one of those eggs, and you can kind of move it around. You can make, you got to make sure they're the same color. If they're different colors like that, it'd be pretty easy. If I put it in the green one, we'd know it was a green one every time. But make sure that it's the same color eggs and put something in it, and then you can kind of move it around and get a friend, get your parents. Uh, get your whoever is around you. Uh, you can even do it yourself if you want to just kind of move it around and, and try to figure out which one it is. But it's kind of a fun game to be playing. And then another thing you can do, it's not really a game, but it's a craft. If you have popsicle sticks at your house, if you like to eat popsicle sticks, and you have a little bit of glue, you can, you can make a popsicle uh, cross. And what you do, you just get popsicles and you lay it across each other, you glue it, or you can tape it, or you can use a string, whatever you have available to you. And then you can you can tape these little things on it. And I, you can even use pennies if you'd like to. You can use anything that you like to just decorate a cross. It's really fun and it's a good little thing to remind us of Easter time, okay? So, you know, just a few little things that you guys can do while you're at home. A few little things that you guys can uh, just just have fun with your parents or have fun with those around you, all right? So, uh, I want to go ahead and get into our lesson today. Our lesson is uh, is about kind of the, the video that we've watched, okay? So, in that video, what did you think whenever you first saw that? What did you think when you first saw that? Did you think that uh, you were seeing science or did you see that you were, think that you were seeing some kind of uh, tr magic trick? Did you think it was science or did you think it was magic? Because you have a few things going on right there and how many of you wanted to look under the table and kind of see if it was actually going through the table? Today's experiment is pretty remarkable. So on this, on this video, they literally took strips of styrofoam and made them vanish and just made them pretty much disappear. Uh, there's no getting them back either. I mean, there is no way that you can get that styrofoam back. They're gone for good. And even though it's true for you science guys out there that molecules that made up the styrofoam still exist, uh, the styrofoam is gone. You can't, you can't get it, you can't try to put it all back together. The molecules might still be there, but you can't put all those molecules back together and make it back into the styrofoam that it was. And today's science experiment is one that I don't want you guys to forget. Uh, you can forget the ingredients we use, like the acetone and the styrofoam, but we want you to remember the visual of seeing the styrofoam vanishing to nothingness. Because when you think of the styrofoam, I want you guys to think of sin. And I want you guys, when you think about the acetone, to think about what happened on the first Easter. Easter is the most important date on the Christian calendar. It's number one. Easter, if it wasn't for Easter, we wouldn't even be here today. We wouldn't have this church. We wouldn't have uh, people who are Christians. So Easter is the most important uh, date on the Christian calendar. Easter is when we celebrate our freedom from sin. And the Bible tells us that we are sinners and that the punishment for sin is death. 
The Bible also tells us that God loved us so much that he sent his only son to take the punishment on himself so that we could live. So this morning, I want everyone, if you have your Bibles with you, and I hope that you do, or you can put it on your phone or whatever, I want you to read along with me. It's Luke chapter 23, 35 through 47. And it says, And the people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, the chosen one, the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him saying, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. That's very important. Remember that. Jesus done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said unto him, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light fell, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God saying, certainly this man was innocent. So this was the loneliest hour of Jesus' life. This was the loneliest hour of Jesus' life. Have you ever felt lonely? Have you ever been by yourself sometimes? You just kind of feel lonely? Well, this was Jesus' loneliest moment in his whole life. All but one of his disciples had abandoned him. Only John, but we can see there, only John was at the cross with Jesus' mother, Mary Magdalene, and a few other women. A crowd laughed and mocked him, and as did the soldiers that were standing by. Even one of the two thieves who was sentenced to die made fun of him. So Jesus endured the most painful death on a cross that you could ever imagine. And he did it with people cheering for his death. They wanted him to die. They wanted him to, to leave this world. They hated him. But even in the darkest of hours, we can see that Jesus knew what he was doing. When the, when the, when the repentant thief asked Jesus to remember him, Jesus said this, This day you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus took the sins of that thief and made them vanish, just like we saw the styrofoam vanish into the acetone a while ago. Jesus took the sins of that thief and made them vanish. Then he took the thief to heaven with him. Jesus died to pay the price for our sins. And if we trust him like the thief on the cross did, then our sins will be erased and we will see him in heaven just like the thief on the cross did. And you know what? If there was ever a man who didn't deserve to die, it was Jesus Christ. If there was ever anybody, you can think of the most perfect person. You can think of a great person that you've ever known. But Jesus was the only man who didn't deserve to die. Jesus was a great man. Jesus was an awesome man. He was half God, half man. He was all man, all God. And he welcomed and he loved everyone who came his way. He performed countless of miracles. He turned water into wine. He healed the sick and disabled. He fed the 5,000 people in just one meal. And he even raised the dead. Most important of all, Jesus never, ever, ever sinned. Say that. Jesus never sinned. Ever. 
There is nothing wrong in Jesus' life. There is nothing wrong whatsoever. Jesus never sinned. He was perfect, okay? So he was the Son of God. And even though he was tempted by the devil, he refused to give in to sin. That's our example today, that Satan will tempt us, Satan will come after us, but Jesus showed us we don't have to give in to temptation. Jesus' perfection made him the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He took the punishment of death upon himself so that he could offer all of us eternal life. Not just one or two of us, not just the pastor, not just the choir director, not just the singer, not just the youth pastor, but just so that he could offer everyone eternal life. And he prayed that we would all come to repentance. He said that he didn't want to see any perish, but he prayed that all would come to repentance in him. But Jesus conquered sin and death whenever he rose from the grave. And if we believe in him, we can receive forgiveness and eternal life. Just, just like you think about Jesus, whenever he died, he was buried, but yet he rose again on the third day. And all this is what makes him God. This week, I want you to remember something. The styrofoam vanishing before your eyes. Think about it. I want you to see your, van your sins vanishing in this story of Easter. God can forgive every sin, and he can give you a clean slate. That's what grace is. It's a do-over. You may say, well, Brother Joey, you don't understand. I've done this, 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 and this. You know what? God says he wipes the, the slate clean. He gives us a new beginning. The Bible said that we are a new creation, that we put off the old man, we put on the new. And it's all because of the Easter story. Not that just Jesus died on the cross, not that he was just buried, but that he rose again on the third day. And that's what the Easter story is all about. And it, it kind of, and we're talking about Easter science. Really? This boggles the mind of scientists because this is not possible. Jesus is the only man that has ever done this. Jesus is the only man crucified on the cross, dead, buried for three long days, and then he rose back to life. God brought him back to life, and now he sits at the right hand of the throne of God interceding for you and for me. So that's what all this is about, so that we can be in heaven with him one day. But all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the risen Savior, and you'll be saved. You have to believe in God. You can't just believe that there is a God. A lot of people believe that there is a God. But you have to believe in God and that you have to believe that he raised Jesus from the dead. Because that's the hard part. We can say, well, I'm not. no, we have to believe that it is true. We have to believe that it did happen. But Jesus died to wash away your sins. Trust him, and he will give you eternal life. And that, that means a whole lot. Think about right now. One million years from now, where will you be? That's eternal life. One million years from now, running around in heaven, you know, talking to God, talking to Jesus, talking to your mom and dad, talking to friends, and, and just, you know, Worshiping Jesus, worshiping God, thanking them for the opportunity to get to go to heaven. And that's what this is about. It's not just so that we can say, well, you know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where we want to talk to others. We want to show them how the styrofoam, how the acetone ate the styrofoam. That's how Jesus did with our sin. He washed it all away. He didn't just hide it, but he washed it away. And we need to thank God for that. So today as we close... I want to say a prayer. And I just want to say, dear God, thank you for saving us from our sins. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, God, for your love and your mercy in our lives. And God, we thank you so much for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And God, this morning I pray that somebody would just look and that they would just want to be a Christian. That they would want to be a son and a daughter. God. And Father, we know that you paid the price. Jesus, you paid the price for our sins. 
we thank you for that, God. And it's in your precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. So today, today I'm going to go after, after our lesson here. I want to go and do our PowerPoint review game. Okay? See if you guys are paying attention. And I want to just kind of tell you, if you've prayed a prayer that, you know, for God to come into your heart to save you, I want you to tell your mom, tell your dad, text me, text Sister Candy, text Brother uh, uh, Tim, you know, just, just let somebody know because we want to rejoice with you that, that Jesus has washed your sins away because that's the single most important decision you'll ever make in your life, okay? So our lesson trivia this morning, the way that we're going to play Answer the following questions about today's lesson, okay? Have you been paying attention? Do you know what we've talked about, okay? How did Jesus die? How did Jesus die? Think about what we talked about. Ready? He was crucified and hung on a cross. If you said he was crucified and hung on a cross, you're right, okay? Give yourself a point. Okay, number two. Who was crucified with Jesus? Do you remember? Remember? One, one was on one side, one was on the other, and they were talking. Who was it? Two thieves. If you said that, give yourself another point. Very good. Number three, what did Jesus say to the repentant thief? Remember the picture we shot a while ago and he was hugging him in heaven? What did he say to him? He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Very good. Number four, why did Jesus die? Oh, here we go. That's kind of a tough one, right? Why did Jesus die? Think about it for a second. All right. To save us from our sins. If you said that, very good. Jesus died to take away all of our sins. Number five, the very, the very last one. Who said that Jesus was a righteous man after he died? Remember somebody said, surely this man was the son of God in our verse. Who was it? The Roman centurion. You said the Roman centurion? You're exactly right. All right. So, guys, this is the end of our lesson today. And I would just like to say thank you for uh, being with us this this, uh, this afternoon, this morning, whenever you're watching. You know, it may be two weeks from now. Uh, it could be midnight, whatever it may be. But we appreciate you guys clicking on today. And uh, we know that God can help you right where you're at. It doesn't have to be a Sunday. It doesn't have to be a Monday. Whenever you're watching this, I just want you to understand that God can, t can touch you, that he can meet your needs, that he can help you. And we love you. This church loves you. Pastor loves you. And we just want you guys to get closer and closer to God. And I know that everybody's at home right now. And uh, if you're watching this three years from now, hopefully, you know, you guys say, hey, you know what happened back in the coronavirus days? You know, we were out of school and stuff. But if you're watching this within the next couple of days, I know that you guys are at home and, you know, you may be bored out of your mind. You may be, uh, uh, you know, just trying to get outside and do a few things. But don't forget about God. And I want you guys, you, you students, to lead your family in a devotion. I want you guys to get a devotion book or to get a scripture that means something to you and you know break it out and lead your family in a devotion. You know, the Bible says to let don't let anybody look down on you because you're young, but be an example to the believers and of the believers. So just because you're young, don't think, well, I can't really lead a devotion and I can't I can't do this or I can't do that. You may be young. But you step up to the plate and let God lead you and guide you, and God can do a lot of things through you that you never even thought possible. But we love you, and we thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in and for, for watching us today. And we love you, and we thank you. And, it's, and we just we want to pray one more time and let you guys go. God, we love you, and we thank you for these students. And we thank you for letting them be on here today, God. And we pray, God, that you would just let them be the, lead, the spiritual leaders um, in their house, God. Let them take initiative and do devotions. Let them take initiative and lead prayer time. Let them take initiative and pray over the food. And God, we love you and we thank you that you're doing something in our hearts and our lives, that your Holy Ghost is doing something through us, God. And I pray, Lord, that you let revival start. 
through the youth, God, and we love you and we thank you. And it's your precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen.